Today on Logan Lee Adventures, come with me as we discover the old world opulence in the heart of Buenos Aires. Oh yeah, and casual tango out in the streets is a very, very common and beautiful, lovely thing here. Good morning! Am I in Paris? In France right now? I mean, the architecture looks like it, right? Or am I in Buenos Aires in Argentina? Well, if you have been following along with my adventures, you know that I am in South America, down here in the capital of Argentina, in Buenos Aires. And I'm exploring today the beautiful, stunning neighborhood of Rotero. So Rotero is basically the hub, the start of Caba. Caba stands for the city of Buenos Aires in Spanish and look, look at this, look at this building, look at these buildings. Let's just take in the sights because you know me, I am an architectural geek and it is so awesome to just be surrounded by these stunning French, very French, very Parisian buildings everywhere in the city. So right here, this is the train station, the Rotero station, which I'll be walking to to explore and go in to see what it looks like inside because actually this was built by British architects. We'll talk about that later more, but even though it's French style, I know. Uh, but I mean, it looks French. It's actually Edwardian. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to try to stop geeking out too much. But then there's this clock tower here. Stunning. I mean, look at the buildings I'm surrounded by. I mean, this is where, so this train station is where the it links the province of Buenos Aires to the capital of Buenos Aires. So stepping out of the station, anyone can, and a lot of people commute to the city or commute out of the city for work and living. So anyone can feel just how like just what a prime capital city it is when you step out and walk here and see these sites as your first sites that you land upon. Uh, look at the detail of this building. Goodness. You can see how it's built by it was built by a British architect, this whole train station, the Riterio station with the Edwardian style going throughout. I mean, yeah, I can see why this for many, many years was considered one of the most prime examples of structural engineering in South America and one of the finest buildings in South America because this station just blows my mind away. Just looking at the steel beams used for the, for the station's roof, and just all the little details it is so gorgeous and well worth that is now today's national monument one national monument in the country now wow. also i'm such a friend like train geek <laughs> i just love trains i just love the old world travel and style of it so this, the fact that this station is so well preserved, it like just feeds that love. This is a key reason why I wanted to move to Buenos Aires in the first place and especially coming to Argentina and then realizing that it it's came true is just to see and exploring the city and seeing wonderful pieces of architecture like this and then having in my mind I was like this is like a cosmopolitan metropolis that so intertwined with like green space and it's so true for all over the city whether you have big lush parks whether you have like benches everywhere that people can just sit on that's i feel like 
that's actually rare for a lot of urban planning nowadays to have such public spaces and benches everywhere either because it's not friendly towards homeless population or there's just lack of greenery lack of public spaces in especially in the big cities yet here right in the capital where everything happens in Argentina like not everything but you know like the heartbeat of the country there's just so much green space and public space for anyone everyone to use which I absolutely adore about the city You may be wondering what is this imposing building right here that's just striking out of this skyline. Well, that is Edificio Cavana. It was built in 1936. It's a Art Deco building and very much so a reminiscence of that time in the 30s. Now, why it's so striking? Because it used to be the tallest building in South America so as you can see all the buildings next to it is still not as tall as it but since it's art deco it kind of really stands out from all the other architecture surrounding Buenos Aires but at the same time all the architecture here is a mismatch of the history of the city as well so you got the French architecture and then you got modern for businesses booming up now so, and then you got Art Deco. So we have three different time, three different type of buildings right next to each other. And that really makes what the city is about too. I simply adore walking around the city and just exploring this neighborhood. Look at this stunning architecture behind me. It's just a casual neighborhood home, casual neighborhood fountain with a little cupid. It's, everything is just so well thought out. So little attention to details like this lamp, gold lamp up and down this tree lined streets. Ah, Buenos Aires. Truly like the grip that this city has on my heart is truly something. I mean, I just love just peeking into these grand doors and hallways. Look at this old elevator. Just experiencing little slice of the lives that people live here. These are like neighborhood homes. Wow, okay, this neighborhood is filled with cute cafes like this too. Alright. And this whole street on Arroyo is filled with art galleries, different high-end antique shops as well. Stunning! So many things to see here. Look at these balconies. Love to have a coffee in the morning, just hanging out there. Hey, speaking of coffee, let's, let's go find a place because I need a little. No, oh, upper this morning, a little zippy. This is the cool Parisian wine bar that we have to go through to get to Kisatin Cafe upstairs, but it is stunning. I love the little details here, the light fixtures, the 
Look at all this. The patterns everywhere and then the wine presentation itself. Such beautifully designed space. Okay, and then I have to go through this stained glass door up these stairs to the cafe. Okay, cool art. Ooh, oh my. Getting it up already. Kisatin and this cafe is so so cute on Oroyo. Look at this little it's on the second floor as you saw that we went into this wine, like this high-end wine store, like a little speakeasy because it's on the second floor of the wine store. You would just not know from the outside. And then on this small level are these cute windows that look out onto Oroyo and so you see that Parisian feel. I just love the minimalistic aesthetics and the beige wood of this cafe as well. So yeah. The Fondacion Austin makes for the perfect afternoon here, especially after having an espresso, then hopping over across the street to this open gallery that features so many local artists. It's really great. You can just explore here, entry is free. Come in, browse. I love it. So it's just like there's just so much celebration of art in this city. I mean, that's kind of just what I had, right? This is Plaza Catalunya, and this is exactly what I mean by public space. Look at this beautiful gazebo in the middle of the city. And then you have the big giant avenue right here. And then you have the French embassy just casually sparkling, shimmering right here in all of his glory so you can come chill hang out in the gazebo soak up this wonderful plaza surrounded by french architecture ah uh, for the public i'm in love i'm in love okay so the really cool thing about embassies here that i learned is that these used to be i mean they weren't built as embassies for embassies they were originally built so as these opulent homes for the upper high class society of buenos aires because again like this used to be one of the wealthiest countries and like top five in the world so a lot of people had a lot of money and french style french food french architecture was in fashion hence why you see such a stunning striking french architecture all over buenos aires and these were people's homes literally one home of a person like of a family but the thing is is that over time the taxes got rot like rose and just people couldn't afford to pay the taxes and like live there so the government bought them and then in turn a lot of these old french mansions and basically castles have been turned into embassies being bought by these countries so we love to work and live there Cali Arroyo has become one of the most desirable in Buenos Aires and was even baptized by Eduardo Malaya as the 
elbow of aristocracy in Buenos Aires. Calle Arroyo, which is Arroyo Street, boasts a classical and stylish French style as you can see, which can be seen from the beautiful mansions and residences all around here. And this street, however, is most known for its ongoing art scene as it hosts the finest art galleries in the city, fashion houses, and embassies. I'm going to take you to some of them today. The street has become synopsis with art via its aristocratic and elegant style. I'm in this wonderful, beautiful square. It's just open for everyone. People are laying around in the grass, biking around, skateboarding around. It is so nice. Anyways, I'm meeting up with my friend Lucius. So we're going to go to this art exhibition at the Centro Cultura Kirchner, which is this huge, huge building that apparently Eva Perón also worked in. Like, that's mind-blowing. And it's an art exhibition that is seven floors. So I cannot wait for this. Okay, this is the building itself. It is gorgeous. Is this how stunning this building is from the inside? This grand painting here. I guess. It's amazing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so green screen. Oh, why, why are you behind it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Central Cultural Kirchner is the largest cultural center in Latin America and everything is free to see spread over a massive tank of nine freaking floors. So make sure you have ample of time when you're here exploring like us. The building actually used to be the Buenos Aires Central Post Office, but has since been used for a few things like the first lady, Eva Perón, designed a wing as the first headquarters of the charitable Eva Perón Foundations, which you can still explore today. <laughs> There's just something so eerie feeling and creepy about these exhibitions, but I love it. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you, ever since moving to Buenos Aires, my steps has been around, I would say like 20,000 steps per day. Crazy. Because I just walk everywhere and look at everything. Huh? Huh? Look at all the beauty surrounding me. What? Oh, oh. Architecture porn here. Architecture here. Oh, okay. Dotted throughout the whole city are these colorful, pop of joy, flower kiosk everywhere. It's so beautiful. Strolling down along Avenue Alvear, which is not even that big of an avenue compared to the other big avenues in the city. There's just architectural gems one after the other here. It is mind-blowing how there's so many beautiful buildings around. I keep saying it, but still can't get over it, you know? I hope you can see just how from strolling around Buenos Aires is an activity in itself. The weather is so pleasant on this autumn day and everything is, well, basically free. And actually, aside from my espresso and matcha cookie that I got at the coffee shop, I won't even be spending a single dime today exploring Buenos Aires at all. Because after all, this city is for the people. French chateaus just dotted all over the city casually. I wish I can say that it doesn't even phase me anymore. That, you know, seeing so many of them is just super casual now, but uh, it still rocks me to my core. I still love it. I still love things like this. Like, look, this gate. It's just casual right outside the subway stop. You know, make an entrance. 
Another fun fact of how French architecture in Buenos Aires was developed was also through the nation's government. In the first years of after independence from Spain, the new country needed professionals and naturally just would not bring them over from the country which had colonized them and it had recently gained independence from. So this is how during the first half of the 19th century, which was a turbulent and dangerous time in Europe, many renowned architects and French engineers who were very eager to be hired to work away from the dangers of wars and coops had a reach that was so far from their own land and all the way in South America and as you can see these high rank professionals left a great impressions on Buenos Aires tell me how I didn't even know about any of this and this is just a cool like freaking chateau to go and explore in and it's just all open. I mean, unless I just like broke an entering, but I doubt that because the security guard just let me in. But like, oh my God. It's a surreal feeling to see these magnificent palaces and chateaus from outside glimmering on the streets, but to actually be inside and see what it looks like interior wise is just such a different visual treat the details within the buildings are no less spared and as you can see they had went all out for it too of course the bathroom is also cool because what's a chateau without the views And just to be able to explore these rooms too. <sighs> the fireplace, the lounge. Let's check out this view. But you know, speaking of not being phased, who aren't phased by this are of course the local porteños. They're just walking around like it's no big deal it's no big deal that they're just surrounded by so much beauty in the city no big deal at all y'all this is a whole mall what on earth like as if today has not just been a overly treat sensory overload of just everything beautiful this adds to it like there's a coffee shop surrounded by the fountain there and it looks like the work of michelangelo up here like this whole ceiling oh my goodness it is Unbelievable. I I just have no words. I think I'm just gonna be silent and take this in. Yeah, just absorb it in. The detail. And as I was walking in, it was already incredible with the skylight, these the details here, like these windows. And then this is the meeting point, the center of the whole Galleria's Pacifico. They literally were not kidding when they, so there's like banners everywhere where it says art and fashion. They don't play. They, they, they for real here. <laughs> they for real here. There's also these murals everywhere in each corner too. I don't think I've ever been this hyped for a mall since like exploring in Milan, the Galleria there, but here, I think it just tops it. There's 
see then cool art galleries within the mall to explore and see. Wow. All along the gallery, well, the mall, is different paintings, different artwork promoted alongside with the local artists and the local fashion designer too. So really promoting the fashion designer and artists here. I love this. And you can just see the different artwork. Just super casual, sleek car in the middle of the store. Then within the mall itself, in Galleria Pacifico, there's Centro Potro Borges, which is this massive open cultural center slash art gallery that features local artist work everywhere. And it's free entry that you can just go in while you do shopping and have a little art break. It's so incredible here. There's actually so many rooms. <laughs> this cultural center is huge to explore. There's so much art to see here. It's so cool. I'm on the top floor now of the Galleria Specifico, and this is just only one room to go see. There's this little window ledge that you can look out into the Galleria Specifico down below. Retiro and the heart of Buenos Aires is definitely not the only neighborhood we will be exploring as I've been showing you so many snippets of Argentina's capital and it will continue in my next vlog. But for now, give this video a like, leave me a comment below what you think of this neighborhood and I'll catch you in the next Argentinian Buenos Aires adventure.